Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonian back with another video. Um, I'm filming this actually the day after the uh, exhibitors one that I uh, filmed yesterday. Uh, so filming this on Saturday the 22nd. We have just had a massive storm. Um, so I've actually got a little teeny leak there that's just blobbing down. Uh, absolutely belted down with the rain. So I'm filming this about 20 minutes later than I wanted to because the rain was so heavy. Um, absolutely awful weather as I've catalogued so many times this spring. Um, today I'm just going to talk, go around the greenhouse, talk about a few things that you can do, particularly for UK viewers that are maybe have one or two issues um, with the cold, the damp. Um, it's a real headache this spring, but there's a few things that you might need to uh, consider when you're um, looking after your pelagoniums in a greenhouse. Uh, so let's have a look. It's I mean, uh, this cool spring and May is turning out to be very wet. I think this is going to end up being one of the wettest Mays we've ever had, uh, as well as slightly cool, uh, generally cooler. Nights have been milder, as I reported on a couple of weeks ago. But um, certainly it's affecting the exhibition plants. Exhibition plants are going to be a bit late, as I was speaking about in the last video. Uh, but there are going to be a few things that with these cool conditions, even in a greenhouse, you're going to have to look out for one or two things uh, with regard to your plants, particularly with watering. Uh, and maybe if you've got early blooms, you may need to think about uh, having a look at some of them, making sure that if they begin to damp off, get rid of them. So we'll just have a look round today and I'll give you a few tips uh, about what I've been doing to some of my plants. Right, okay, so we're going to start up this end. Um, there's our bicolour Mr. Wren. That actually needs a water, I think, but I'll do that later. Now, a plant the other week that I had here that lots of people wanted to know what the actual plant was. Focus, there we are. Uh, this is a plant of mini check. Uh, and it's turned lovely green now as the, as the weather has <laughs> gradually warmed up. I have actually had to move quite a remove quite a lot of um, proliferation on the uh, blooms of this plant. Uh, I've stripped them all back. I think they're just starting to come through. True, that one isn't. Uh, I spoke about proliferation in the last video for exhibitors. It's something that uh, does happen. Um, See if I can home in on that in terms of focus. It's basically where you get a bloom with a bit of sort of supplementary growth on, and that's got a leaf uh, that's just beginning to sprout through uh, on an actual bloom. And it, 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 it sort of takes energy away from the plant. You don't really want it to have that on it. Uh, but I have more or less removed all of those now. Um, so, you know, that's growing through nice and strongly. Lots of good green growth. In the winter, a lot of these smaller leaved plants will grow through with the dark foliage. Uh, but in the spring, once the weather begins to warm up, I mean, it is doing so gradually here at the moment, um, you get this lovely fresh green growth. Same is true with Burns Country. You know, I've got a huge great Burns Country here. Uh, and this is just beginning to come into flower. But all the dark leaves now have been replaced by the lovely shielded medallion dark leaved blooms, uh, sorry, dark leaved leaves uh, of, the, of the actual plant in the summer. Uh, and the dark leaves are gradually being sort of uh, replaced. I've been taking a few of them off, but I can take like that one off. Here's a dark one. That's just come through from the winter, so I can remove that. But lovely green, fresh growth. That's uh, beginning to grow through now. Um, and as I say, they replace all of the dark leaves that we get during the winter. One thing that you do need to do, particularly with some of the early flowering regals, if we look over here, uh, we got an early flowering regal here. This is, these are just ones that I've not stopped. Um, you can clearly see 
that we've got some, uh, this is damped off, these blooms have damped off. And this is just purely down to the fact that the weather has been so damp, haven't been able to open the greenhouse perhaps as much as I would like. Um, now, you may notice now that I'm being really fussy, what you would normally probably do is take these whole heads out. But the reason I'm not is because I've actually been doing some hybridizing of these early flowering regals. Now, I have got hold of a, a sort of fair number of new regals uh, from Fibrex Nursery this spring. And I've been doing some uh, cross-pollination with some of my plants uh, to produce, to hopefully produce, obviously, in the long run, some uh, new blooms. And what I've done up here, if we home in on that one, I'm actually just going to home in that one there. That's one of my own hybrids. Um, well, one of my own plants that I've bred. I think you've seen it in the past. Uh, that's actually unnamed at present. It's not one that I have put through for trial yet, although I do particularly like it. I think it's going to make a very good show plant. I have actually um, used that as a seed parent. And what I'm actually doing, I've been crossing it with a very dark, uh, dark flowering variety called Babe Wilson. Um, this is a new variety, I think this year, that uh, Fibrex have released. It's one of Martin Pope's. I know Martin very well. Uh, it's got a very deep plum um, bloom, very frilly. And I want to introduce some frilliness into that plant there. So, um, we, right, the feathering is very dark, obviously, on it. And it's on every petal as well. It's a full surround. Uh, so when I'm doing some crossing, uh, this one is a solid plum. Let's focus on. This one is a solid plum. And basically, I want to get some frilliness from this in it. Unfortunately, there's not a bloom open today. I'll show you, perhaps in the next video, if there's a, if there's a bloom open. But I have been using them, and you can see here... I've removed all of the individual florets for breeding. Um, and I've got one or two that are beginning to beak out anyway on the other plant. I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, but this Babe Wilson is actually quite strange because it ends up being very dark, very plum with a slightly very dark um, centered feather. But when the blooms first begin to break, they start as a creamy white. And I'm finding that quite unusual. And then they gradually get darker. There's one that's just be just beginning to break. It's almost creamy white. And then it gradually darkens a bit more to this colour. And then it finally ends up being a very dark plum. Very unusual, that. Um, normally, you get a good idea when the uh, bloom is beginning to open what colour it's going to be. But in this case, it's very misleading. But um, it's a lovely plant. It's quite sort of compact. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how that develops with crossing with this large, flowered, quite strong-growing plant of mine that's a real going to make a really good show plant. There's a beet coming out of that one there. I've only used a Babe Wilson on that as a cross, so I've made that note. Um, and so I know that all of those on there where I've done some cross-pollination is basically that plant, which hasn't got a name, but it's got a number, and they're crossed with uh, the Babe Wilson. Um, I've also done some others. I've done Ada Green times Lilac Elaine, which is that plant there. Um, and we've got an Ada Green there. Ada Green is a very dark leaved, very sort of got very dark uppers, with a lovely sort of salmon pink shaded lower petaled um, plant. And that, that's just opened and so is full of pol pollen. One of the things you find, particularly with regals, the pollen's um, very good when the bloom's open, it's ready for crossing. But the actual stigma where you actually put the pollen onto uh, opens a little bit later. So the two, it's a shame the two don't really match together, but um, it's not really a problem when you're cross-pollinating. But um, 
I've actually put some Ada Green crosses on this Lilac Elaine because Lilac Elaine is in a, in an illustrious uh, show plant. Can't see any beaks forming on there. They don't always take a course. Just depends. Um, but yeah, so I have been doing a bit of um, cross pollination. That's a side issue. Sorry about that. I uh, but the main thing to remember, and we've got some here. This hasn't been used for breeding. So this is a complete mess. I will put that one back because I have used that for breeding. That's been used with a plant called Jolenta. Done some crossing on that one. Uh, but I will take this whole head off. Just snap it back. I'll get in focus. You can use a pair of scissors, of course. But uh, a whole sort of messy head like that you need to be getting rid of is one of the part and parcels of the damp. Um, you really need to get them off, both Zonal and Regal. Regals, of course, will suffer a bit more from it uh, because of the large sort of blooms that they have. Again, if you've got young standards, uh, continue to train them up. That one, for instance, needs uh, tying in. I would just tie that to bring that up to the side. Uh, things like that you can do. We've got others that... I'm wanting now to let go. That one is a very sort of quirky plant. Um, I will let that break now. It's got a nice side shoe coming on there and, and a bloom. I will let that go now. Uh, and it will be a short standard, but it's not to worry. You can grow them to any height, really. Um, so it's going to be quite interesting how they progress. Here are all my regals that are very questionable as to whether they're going to be ready for the show or not. Uh, very interesting. Now, one problem, of course, that a lot of growers in the UK have got is this. I've got a huge, great 16-inch basket. That's ready to go outside, but you can't go outside because it's too cool and wet at the moment. Similar thing, um, my wife... Susie has done this lovely, she likes the scented, uh, filled up a pot with scented, um, I think she's put on one or two of her social media pages, uh, and it's got, yeah, there's got a bit of grey sort of uh, bedding in there just to sort of mix and match it a bit, that needs to go outside, uh, can't do it because, as uh, I say, it's too cool and wet. I've got a load of huge plants here. I've got a monumentally sized, that's two foot round at least, uh, of a Lady Plymouth. All these giant ones need to go outside. Um, it really is a problem. Uh, supposedly in about a week's time next weekend, which incidentally is the Spring Bank holiday weekend, is meant to be starting to get a bit warmer at long last. And I can clear out uh, a number of these plants. Uh, more of them here. Um, large plants that need to go outside. Now this is a new uh, variety. One of Steve Pollard's crosses. And I actually really like this. It's got a very feathery bloom. It's a Stella. Um, almost sort of Formosum in some ways. Probably is a Formosum. I'm not a real expert on the Stellas and Formosums. Steve will no doubt uh, maybe butt in if I ever post this. He can comment on the YouTube channel. But this started flower, and I actually love it. It's got very light green leaf with the dark, lovely um, bronze, uh, sort of deep golden bronze um, overlay on it. Um, beautiful plant, beautiful contrast between that almost sort of dark burgundy in the light green and then you've got this lovely sort of vibrant magenta bloom coming out of it really love that i've got that in a 12 inch hanging pot and that's gone absolutely bonkers uh grown quite well come through the winter relatively easily as well which not all stellas do um so yeah i i'm really looking forward to that got loads of bloom coming on it took one or two of the early ones off which we've had problems with of course um we've still got like a few here is an ordinary stella and this is still immature blooms i'll break that one off because it's still not 
we were talking about the uh, deformed blooms that you often get at this time of year. Well, not in this time of year, earlier normally, but um, still got one or two coming through, but a good number now are beginning to come through as normal. But really love that. Um, but you can see here, just talking of deformed blooms, uh, this one, in many ways, they've all sort of come back to normal. Now, these are normal blooms. These are some of my hybrids um, that are unnamed. I think I have named that one. That one's going to be Snowball Pure White Single. Uh, Glacier is a lovely sort of vibrant white um, double. Uh, but they're all back to normal now. That was the point I was getting on to. Uh, love this. This is a really lovely, vibrant white. That one's going to be called Shrivenham Glacier. That's quite nice. Uh, but yeah, so there's a, there's a, they're all, what I'm basically saying is, is that the double blooms are all beginning to come through now at long last. Um, but as I said, if they begin to damp off, get rid of them because it often spreads a bit of muck onto the plant and you really do not want rotting even at this very early stage. I mean, you shouldn't be getting rotting really at this time of year, but um, it's very important to uh, to ensure that you, you don't get, you know, damp material going onto the rest of the plant. You've got to be careful not to overwater your plants because there are one or two that I have slightly overwatered. I've just about got away with it, I think, because, of course, we're wanting to push them on. The other problem we've had in the UK, of course, is that we're generally getting one slightly warmer day and then another cooler day. So if you're watering things on a warmer day, you may think uh, that you should maybe go a little bit more um, water with feed uh, as required um, than you should do. And realistically, you need to be very careful that you do not overwater at this early stage when it is so cool. Uh, so just a, a you know a thing to remember: um, don't be go being overzealous with the watering. Got this massively huge standard which we've seen. Showed it a couple of weeks back. It's right at the top of that block now, and that is going to be let to grow. Uh, it's about a meter tall, if not even more, smidge including the pot. Very pleased with that, growing very well. Uh, we have got a few reddening leaves down below. They were obviously formed some time ago, but I'm leaving them on. And that's the thing with your standards. Leave leaves on the main stem until you know, you're know you getting plenty of body at the top. Um, going back over here, uh, some of these have just naturally died off anyway. I mean, I've got a... I've got a Formosum type one here, I think. And some of these have just died off. I've tried leaving them on. The tip continues to grow, but it is very slow. Again, it's our cool spring, which hasn't helped. Um, but yeah, if you're growing a standard though, leave all the side leaves um, on. Take the side shoots out, but try not to take the leaves off with them. So you'll see on all of these uh, young standards that I've got, that the leaves are still on until you begin to form a head so there's enough body in the plant to be able to sustain it basically and make it grow on very strongly. Uh, now an interesting plant that I did get hold of from Fibrex Nursery was this Mr Wren Splash and it's just got the first bloom out and there we are that's Mr Wren Splash. Uh, it's got a slightly obviously the sport that created this has got slightly what I would call waffled leaves Big strong grower, obviously, but um, there's. I'm trying to see if I've got a fairly decent because, again, obviously, with early blooms, there's the bicolour Mr. Wren against the against the splash Mr. Wren, slightly different, a bit more white on it with the sort of uh, I don't know what you'd call it almost glitterable effect of the splashing um, as opposed to the more sort of slightly larger um, solid coloured centre of the bicolour. I will almost certainly um, train that just uh, to make a, either a big fan or something along those lines because it's clear, clearly vigorous but it's unusual, unusual leaf but we get the lovely bloom of course which is always 
really lovely. Uh, I do like Mr. Wren in all its forms. Uh, the, the original green leaf version, though, I always used to find that the bloom never stayed stable. I always went to a solid red for me, which is why I love the bicolour version, uh, which, of course, remains completely uniform, both in leaf and flower. OK, well, there we are. A few sort of just little, little hints and tips and show you what's going on in my greenhouse now. We're just about to have another storm, so I'm going to close off before the, uh, the greenhouse gets battered again. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've tried to get, as I say, I've tried to give a few hints and tips. If I do any more cross-pollinating uh, with an hybridizer with the regals, I will just film it. I must remember to do that next time and we can just amalgamate it together. But I've shown you what I've crossed and what I'm using. So I'll get another video out probably the week after next. In the meantime, um, hopefully we'll get some slightly warmer weather and we can get all these big plants outside. Uh, and I'll see you again very soon.